Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about the Misato banner and Misato's banner features Misato herself and Hatsune who is the three star feature on the banner. Without further ado, let's just jump into it. You guys already know what's coming. It's a TLDR. A TLDR is no, you should not roll on this banner. Remember that we are getting the daily free 10 draws. So aside from that, I really would not recommend drawing on this banner. If you really want to pull for something, hold out until the next banner, which is the Ilya banner. This banner is going to last for 17 days, I believe, which is actually only one day more than the Japanese counterpart. So for those of you who are not quite like happy about like the extended banners or whatever, this is not the banner to be upset about because it was only increased by one day, whereas the other banners were increased by like four to like six or whatever days. Looks like Crunchyroll is still tuning it, but again, let's just get back to Misato and Hatsune. Misato is a good healer. I guess she is kind of like a replacement, not replacement, but an alternative to Yui. I don't know how many of you guys remember, but from like ranks one to six, Yui just kind of really sucked. Misato kind of helps that because out of the door, she's actually pretty good already. Let's jump into her skills and see how she does. So with her UB, she recovers HP and increases magic defense for all allies. I'm going to think from all contents point of view, I'd say this is relatively useless in arena. And the reason is because it's a UB, right? The recover HP and increase magic defense, man, especially if you're thinking about, oh my God, I'm going to get wrecked by Ilya. Misato is actually not the answer. UBs, especially Misato's is just, it, it just takes way too long to actually charge up to use. We're about to move into a very different meta. I'm pretty sure store meta is about to die. Not with Misato's release, but with Ilya's release. Especially those that are going for Ilya, you guys are going to be running with like, I think Saren and Yuki. For you guys who haven't watched my battery video yet, it means that Ilya is just going to be gaining TP super fast. She's going to be able to Yubi almost right off the bat and she will just like destroy the team. So it's for the reasons like that, Misato kind of just doesn't work out. She's just not fast enough. And if you're focusing purely on like defensive, it just doesn't really work. The Yubi itself is okay, I guess, especially for sustain. She's not really like, a, okay, she kind of is a dedicated healer, but she has quite a lot of offensive capabilities as we'll see down the line. Again, like I said, especially a little kind of guidance for these skills. I Wherever you use Yui, you probably would be able to use Misato. Moving on, let's get into the skill one, which is Define Force. So this just increases magic attack for all nearby allies. So I think this is a medium increase, which is fairly good. However, what you need to know is that the magical attack increase is only for the 300 range within Misato. What this means is that if we take Misato's position, which is 700, 135, she will only buff characters around 300 range from her. What this does mean is that she actually buffs up to Anna, but not Ilya. You can see if you take away 300 range from that, that's 735. I think it's 435. And you see that Ilya has just missed out. It is for this reason that when Ilya comes out, you'll see that Ilya and Misato actually don't work together. I mean, you could if you play it more like technically, but like this, for these reasons, that's why you're not going to see much of that. However, when Misato gets her skill one UE unique equipment, she gets an upgrade to the skill one, which is increases nearby allies magical crit rate by a medium amount. Oh my lord. On top of that, her increase to magic attack actually becomes a large amount and like, oh jeez, this makes like everyone around her a nuke. Especially given her positioning, she's in the back line, right? She's around all of the other mages. She is going to be a really, really dank support for magic attackers. I'm talking your Kyoka. I'm talking your Hatsune, wherever she is. She is back here somewhere. But like predominantly, your mage is going to be in the back line here. Summer Kiaru is here. Your Yui is here. You guys get the point. Coming out of skill 1 UE, we go into the skill 2 which is HP regenerate to the frontmost ally. So I want to talk about this mechanic for a bit because like it's a little bit more like game philosophy or game design. Typically in games your HP regenerates or like your heal over time skills they will be stronger than your flat heals. So by flat heals I mean kind of like her UB right where it just like has a one off heal you for like 500 HP. The reason is is because heal over time has a downside which is that it's like going over 7 seconds in this case. You actually need time for the heal to ramp up. Usually in game design, having the HP recover over like a set amount of time means that you're going to have to compensate somehow. So for example, if a heal normally does like, you know, in the one second instantaneous heal heals 500, usually your heal over time or your HP regenerate or whatever is going to do like 600 or 700 or something. So what this means is that like from a reactive point of view, it's not that really good, although you can't even control it anyway. But in the long run, HP regenerates or heal over times should technically regenerate more than the instantaneous heals. What I don't like about the skill is that it is only the front 
frontmost ally. And as you guys are probably experiencing with World 11 right now, there are a lot of those like chickens with the sticks and they jab your second in front. Usually that's my Makoto and my Makoto just ended up dying in one or two of the stages. Again though, like typically your frontmost ally is probably gonna be the one that needs the HP regenerate. I'm just a really big fan of like the targeted healing skills. So like Yukari, Shizuru, uh, Jun, I think, but they heal like the lowest HP ally. And that just like, it's so much utility in that, right? However, for content like CB where like Misato, you know, if she's gonna heal everyone with her UB, but then like the boss is predominantly going to be hitting the frontmost unit, then that is absolutely no problem. This is definitely going to help that. Moving on to her EX skill, she just gets more magic attack and magic attack for you guys who don't remember. Every healer's heals is based on their respective attack. So like, for example, I think Yukari uses physical attack. And in this instance, Misato and Yui, for example, use magical attack, which affects their heals. One level bonus, she's a support magic attack, which is great and magic defense, which is cool because it gives her some survivability. I'm not looking for magic crit rate here. I don't even know if she has any like damaging skills, but so down to her attack pattern. So these icons are actually wrong, I think. So her skill one is remember the magic attack buff and the skill two is the heal over time to the frontmost unit. This is actually pretty good because what this means is that she is actually buffing herself up before she is going to use her heal. Not only that, but her surrounding characters also get the buffs before they start like throwing stuff out there. This is a great initial pattern and it's pretty standard from here, the loop. It's it's okay. It's what it is. Again, just to summarize Misato for each type of content, I would say like for story, she's quite good because she has all those heals and like the magic attack buff. A lot of the time, especially in story, you need that kind of hybrid. You need a bit of healing as well as the damage or like the support for damage. Again, because you use Yui a lot in like the PVE or like the main kind of story, like whenever you use Yui, or you could consider using Misato instead, especially if you're using a magic based team. For clan battle, however, I think she has like pretty good utility as well. I don't think right now is the time to use her, especially with CB coming up in the next like 24 hours or something. I think the time to use her will be next CB in which we will get Ilya. And I know I said Misato probably doesn't buff Ilya without some sort of like move speed manipulation, but Misato is going to buff everybody else. So I'm talking like the Kiaru or I'm talking about the Ana or the Hatsune or whoever else you're going to be using. And of course the Kyoka, how could I forget the Kyoka? All in all, a pretty solid unit. However, again, do not roll for her. Like she is going to come to the dungeon shop, like maybe in a couple of months. We've got like 90 or 100 free rolls or something coming up. Like it'd be a pretty unlucky if you weren't to get her. All right, with that being said, let's get into Hatsune. I think I've covered Hatsune like a million times by now. So let's start with her skills. I'm sure everybody has experienced Hatsune now, especially in arena. Like she does a whole bunch of like, you know, the stars falling things like ding, 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 ding. That is her UB and that is probably what she's most known for. But like, she's not really, it's not really all about that. She's pretty much the magical Tamaki where she targets the enemy with the highest physical attack in which, you know, Tamaki targets the highest magical attack. It's a bit different. So skill one is just some small damage to it. And when she gets her UE, she actually lowers the magic defense of that unit. The damage gets upgraded to medium magic damage. So that's, it's decent. It's good. However, I guess the problem with this is that like, you know, she, it helps her kill her unit faster, whoever she's attacking. But typically it doesn't help the rest of the team because like she is pretty much the only unit to target the highest physical attack attacker. If I head on over to skill two, she pretty much does the same thing. She's targeting the highest physical attack, but she just like smashes a stun onto them. This is good. Like uh, overall, like Hatsune, she's like your Tamaki, except she doesn't steal TP. She just like stuns them. EX, magic attack, pretty standard. And one level bonus, magic attack, magic crit rate. She's a magic attacker, an AOE magic attacker. Aside from that, she starts off with a skill two, which is really interesting because like this actually has potential to rough up whoever she's attacking. Skill two, remember, is a stun. So that means that if you catch their character, the highest physical attacker mid skill, then it will actually cancel that skill. Skill. It then goes into a skill one, which is just more damage to it. And then we've got like the standard rotation here. Not really much to say, but like, where is she applicable? Again, guys, don't take her to clan battle. Her ratios just like suck it purely because she is more of like a magical AOE attacker. Remember guys, AOE skills have like significantly lower ratios because they're attacking more enemies. For Reno, you guys already know, if there is a high threat, they, well, there usually is a lot of high threat, uh, physical attacking units, you bring Hatsune. Hatsune is featured in a lot of famous comps such as Mage Melt and a whole bunch of other stuff. But recently, Hatsune has been used with like Ninon, for example, on like defense, which is really interesting. You should look at Hatsune as a physical attack deterrent, but she's not really. Especially if you can load up your team with so many physical threats, it's kind of whatever, but you kind of need to know the comps. For main story PvE, I actually kind of use her on one of my alts or my former alts that I used to play. It's just nice having some magical damage because like there are some monsters that you can't kill without magical damage. That's kind of the summary for Hatsune. I'm pretty sure you guys have already like know already what she does and like where she kind of fits in. Summarize, her main utility is in arena and if you really want to know well, like you know what she does 
you want to go into PCR defense, right? This is probably the way you'll get the most value out of her. And if you just like chuck in Hatsune somewhere up here, and if you look for a couple of comps, like you'll definitely find stuff here. A lot of the counters actually feature Hatsune, which is, um, you know, not that great because I don't, I still don't have her. But yeah, hopefully in your 100 rolls, you will be able to pull a Hatsune and a Misato. Again, guys, the average rate to hit the featured five star is about 142 rolls. So don't be too disappointed. I know you guys are going to be disappointed anyway. I was disappointed anyway. It doesn't matter, right? <laughs> Gacha gamers, am I right? <laughs> One last thing maybe is Misato's voice actress is Marco Koda. Uh, uh, mm? Like, I don't think I've seen too much of her work, but if you guys, you know, if this makes any sense to you guys, or I, I know this anime and a couple of others, but like for the most part, I don't follow this video. Actually, I don't follow many VAs, but I know a lot of you guys are really into Hololive or really into VAs and stuff. But have a look at her portfolio, see if there's anything that, you know, resonates with you and maybe that will compel you to pull. But again, I really would not recommend spending like a single ticket or a single gem in this banner. Hold out guys, that's like a week away. We're almost there. All right, that kind of brings us to the end of the video. So let's just wrap it up here. All right, I got a secret message for you guys. Actually, you know what? It's a secret choice. Would you guys describe her as an elf teacher or an elf healer? Leave either one of them down below, whichever you prefer, and I will learn something about your preferences, huh? That being said, if you guys have enjoyed this video or this video has kind of helped you, then consider leaving a like, comment, subscribe, and whatever other verbs there are. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.